Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Walgreens stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Walgreens Boot Alliance is a holding company headquartered in Deerfield, Illinois that owns Walgreens, Boots, and a number of other pharmaceutical manufacturing, wholesale, and distribution companies. The company owns 55% of Alliance Boots, which is a European pharmacy. This holding company is organized into three divisions. Retail Pharmacy, which is made up of Walgreens and Dwayne Reed. The second division is Retail Pharmacy International, which is Boots and other smaller pharmacies. And the third division is Pharmaceutical Wholesale, which is Alliance Healthcare. Just this week, the company sold its Alliance Healthcare business for $6.5 billion to Amerisource Bergen. It appears that Walgreens Boots is focusing on its retail business and shedding its wholesale business. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 37 billion market cap. That's the value of the company according to the stock market. They're trading at $43 a share and they have 864 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video and free cash flows cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has positive and really healthy free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that was really high except in 2020. That was only 456 million. Revenue is the sales for the company and that grows every single year from 118 billion to 139 billion. And you can see this is a low margin business. Net profit margin is three to 4%. And it was close to 0% in 2020 because of its low income. The way you calculate net profit margin is net income divided by revenue. It's how well you convert revenue into profit. So you can see in 2019, they converted 3% of their revenue into profit, which means 97% went towards expenses. 3% is low, but 3% of $136 billion is still $4 billion, a lot more than most companies can generate. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales, Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses that are directly related to generating the revenue. And then the difference between those two numbers is the gross profit. And that was the lowest in 2020. Then you have operating expenses. Then below that is operating income. And that was under $1 billion, also the lowest in 2020. The company also has a lot of debt. So they have a pretty big interest payment on their debt and then there's other income and expenses, and that was positive. So when companies generate income or lose money that's not part of their core operations, they have to put that in other income and expenses. So the bottom line of the income statement is their net income. That was half a billion in 2020, but much higher in prior years. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow, and that's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. And operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. That's how much cash is left over for the company to invest back into the business. They could pay down debt with it, or they can buy back stock. And of course, what investors like, they can pay dividends as well. This company does pay a good dividend, but another way to reward investors is to buy back stock. Because when a company buys back stock, that takes the stock off the market and lessens the number of shares outstanding, which increases the stock price, making your shares worth more. They repurchased $5 billion in 2017, $5 billion in 2018, then $4 billion, then $1.5 billion. And the company did not issue any debt in 2017, and they paid over $6 billion of debt. But in 2018, they issued $6 billion, paid $5 billion. So they increased their debt $1 billion in 2018. They increased it $2 billion in 2019. They did decrease their debt $1 billion in 2020. In their past four years, they did decrease their total debt load. The most important part of any business is their operating cash flow. 
And this company does generate a lot of operating cash flow, five and a half billion in 2020. And the way you calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income, that was 424 million, and then you have to add back the non-cash items from the income statement. They pass through a 1.9 billion depreciation expense, so we have to add that back. And they also had a $2 billion asset impairment, so we have to add that back. So even though they had low net income, they still generated a lot of cash flow, $5.5 billion, similar to last year. So a big reason they had low net income was not because their business was struggling, is because of this big asset impairment. Let's look at a capital structure. They have $21 billion of equity, $40 billion of debt. So about one third of that capital structure is equity, two thirds is debt. So the company's pretty leveraged. Their WAC is 6.25%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that's 199 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $180 billion. We divide that by 864 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 208. They're trading at 43, so they're trading at a 79% discount. It's a really strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street values the company at 127, so they're also saying the stock is undervalued, just not as much as me. This is the stock price the last five years, so you can see it's been coming down little by little every year. So it looks like it's at a great value. The company does pay a nice dividend, 4.28%. The way you calculate their dividend yield, it's annual dividend payment over market cap. Or you could take the last four dividend payments, add that up, then divide by the stock price. So since the stock price keeps coming down and their dividend payments keep going up, that gives them a higher dividend yield. And you can see their payout ratio is 351%. Payout ratio is annual dividend over net income. And the reason it looks so high is because of that huge asset impairment. I like to look at annual dividend over free cash flow, and now it's 39%. Net income is accounting profit and loss. Free cash flow is actual cash. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd have $13,000 today. If you did not reinvest the dividends, you'd have $13,700 today. So if you put $10,000 into this company in January 2011, you would have been up right away, and then you would have been down for a few months. But then you would have made a lot more money. If you sold at this point, you could have sold for $25,000. But if you kept holding, you'd be at $13,000 today. But your investment could potentially go up to thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 in the next few years. It could also go down a lot. The stock market's unpredictable. And about six to eight million shares are traded each day on this stock. And of the 864 million shares outstanding, 717 million are on float. That means they're available for investors like me and you to purchase. 59% of the shares are held by institutions. 2.4% of the shares on float are shorted. This company has a really low beta, 0.52, so the stock moves half what the market moves. The stock has gone down 26% in the past 52 weeks, which is much worse than the S&P 500. The low was 33 and the high was 57. The stock is trading above its 50 day moving average and 200 day moving average. Their largest shareholder owns almost 17% of the company, then Vanguard owns 7%, then BlackRock, State Street, and Capital Research. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 12, the median is 14.9. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 82, much worse than the median and average. That means investors are paying $82 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 0.3, much better than the median and average. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 1.8, also better than the median and average. The way you calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet, and they have $21 billion, but they have negative $5.4 billion of tangible equity because they have $26 billion of intangible assets on their balance sheet. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they don't have a great interest coverage ratio, but they can cover their interest payments. 
ROE is net income over equity. They're only 2%, so they're doing much worse than the median and average. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can only cover 70% of their current liabilities with their current assets. Current assets are half a billion of cash, 7 billion of receivables, and 9.5 billion of inventory. The company will probably need more debt or equity financing to run their business over the next 12 months. Because they generated 4 billion of free cash flow, but their working capital is negative 9 billion. Plus they have over 1.5 billion of dividend payments. With the sale of their wholesale business, they're going to receive a nice cash injection. So to summarize, I have them standing at a really big discount. And this is such a big retail chain with presence in the United States and all over Europe. I think this company has really great growth potential. And they provide a service everybody needs, whether it's a bad economy or a strong economy. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.